Okay, so we are going to go over the auto rail functions and how to fill out the auto rail section for a stair rail. So we'll go to our ribbon and select stair rail. We can start with importing a template if there is a design or set of steps that closely matches what we're about to do, what we're about to draw. The, if we don't import a template, we will go to the members where we will select all of our all of our materials list. If you imported a template, it will automatically fill in the members list from the template. So, if we select our members, we can select our top rail, which will be capping and channel. One and three quarter cap and channel will be our typical MCR for our standard uh, multi cap uh, railing. The end post we can select whatever uh, material we're going to use there, which is typically square tube, one inch uh, for a continual top, or a two inch uh, if it has the ball cap. So if it's one inch, we can then put in our tube thickness here, which will be 16 gauge, which is typical for most of our railings. Unless it's a special railing, we can put in 14 gauge or 11 gauge for our one inch post if we need it to be a little stronger for some reason. If we click copy this info to other pieces, it will allow us to select what other pieces use this material. So that's helpful for our in post and our media, intermediate post. We don't have to continue to put the select a square tube, select one inch, and type in 16 gauge again. We can just select it. If you click copy this info to other pieces, click the other piece you would like, it will copy it over. Uh, since it's already selected in the intermediate post, it won't let me copy it, but it, it will and it will change it just like it did this bottom rail. Uh, so we'll select our bottom rail, which it will be a bar channel. For this type of railing, it will be half by one. For our vertical pickets, we'll choose our square bar, our half inch square bar. We will select our max gap right here. We can also do fixed spacing if we're trying to say match something up that's currently there, we can put in the spacing that we know they already have, uh, or typical will be max gap, four inch max, that way we meet all the code requirements. And then we'll say okay. If we want a secondary top rail, like a three rail design, we can select our say, rectangular bar um, or a bar channel with a, a half by one, and we can select the offset right here, which would be how many inches it moves it down from the bottom of the top rail. Um, we're not going to do a secondary top rail on this one, so we'll keep it no secondary top rail. We will leave this section right here, uh, in post to top rail connection. For this type of rail, it will be butt or cope. That will be the default, and that's where we will leave it always. Um, if we're doing a two inch in post, with a one and three quarter cap and channel, the post will need to stick up above the cap and channel. We can do post top over top rail, and we can specify the distance here, which is usually 1.25 inches. Um, we can also select add ball caps for the two inch post, and it will bring up a dialog box to select the certain ball caps. Um, it will add it right here, so we can actually select our ball caps based on the size. Um, We'll deselect ball caps because this one, of course, won't have ball caps, and we will leave it at butt or coat for the post connection. Our typical floor to post bottom distance uh, is a plate. Our plates are a quarter inch, so 0.25. That will subtract that plate from the post loop. If it's below the floor or if it's an extra long post and it goes in concrete, we can actually make it a negative number, and we can make it say it will go 12 inches in the ground right here. Uh, typically, if it has a base weight, this will be 0.25. The tilt, that will just determine which way the rail shows up on the drawing. Uh, this one that is selected will be from top left to bottom right. This one will be top right to bottom left. Here, we can actually add in the uh, label. Um, for whatever we would like to call this rail. So if there's multiple rails on the project, we can name it uh, 
whatever the project name is, and then uh, stair one. And then we can have project stair two if they have another set of stairs, project stair three if they have another set of stairs, and we can continue on so that they will be differentiated on the drawing. This uh, quantity, if they're getting one side, we will leave it at one. If they're getting two sides, we can put in two, and it will double the bill of materials uh, so that the guys will cut enough material for two railings. So we'll make it two because that is typical. They usually get both sides. If we come over here to stair rail, stair rail dimensions, if you put in the number of stair treads, it will automatically calculate the number of risers. For this set of steps, we have four stair treads, five total rises. It usually defaults to the stringer or locate from stairs, uh, stringer or locate from stairs uh, drawing, which this would be like a big piece of C channel on an apartment complex stair. That is not our typical, uh, our typical drawing or our typical. Um, our typical build. Our typical build would just be set step on tread. It will be this is how all of our customers' stair treads look. And then you can have vertical pickets or horizontal pickets right here. There are multiple ways to put this information in over here on the bottom right. Um, what we do is diagonal dimension and angle. So I get this nose to nose dimension which in this case is 42 right here. And then I get the railing angle. This is what I always bring back on our drawings. So working from right to left on this drawing, right here we have our typical height of a railing, which is 36 inches high. If it has a landing, you can select this checkbox and it will put the landing on here. If it's not, calculate any offsets for say a stoop where it might come out at us this at this direction um, it makes this in one entire piece so usually although although there is the option for landing usually it will not have a landing um, this is bottom of the bottom channel to the uh, floor which is two this is to select whether or not there is a post at the end. Sometimes there is, sometimes there is not. If there is a post, this is the dimension for the uh, for the nose of the very top step to either the center post, or you can change which edge of the post that dimension is on. From the field, I usually put the center of the post if I don't know what material uh, that we're going to have. If I don't know what type of railing it is, I usually measure it to the center of the post, but just make sure that this is going to be correct with the measurements that are brought back to the shop. Our railing angle in this case is 33. Our nose to nose is 42 in this case. Uh, you have to put in this intermediate post dimension, which would be a center post, even if even if there is not going to be an intermediate post on the step, this railing is so short that there will not be, but this dimension has to be in the drawing. Um, if there should be, and I bring back a measurement for this, put it in. If I don't bring back a measurement, it usually is about four. Um, four or five is about the center of the step. And again, here we actually have to which side of the post we would like to measure it. Um, most of the time it won't matter because there won't be an intermediate post. Now once we get down here to the bottom, this measurement is how far the bottom of the bottom channel is from the stair nose. So this measurement is almost always one and a half unless I specify differently in the drawing. Sometimes these middle steps are a little taller and so we might use a larger measurement here, like one and a half, or sometimes even one and three quarter or two inches, so that the bottom of this channel does not touch these, these steps right here. This measurement is from the nose of your step to the very top of the rail. It is 36, unless otherwise specified, it is almost always 
36. This number is where the post will land either on this bottom step or off the bottom step. As you can see, I have a negative number in here. So this post will actually be in the drawing, it will be three inches from the end of this step out this way. So a negative number will place it off of the step. A positive number will push it back further from the nose of the step onto the step. Again, we have where that is measured from on this post. And so make sure that if it if you're measuring from the stair nose to the front side of the post and this number is negative, it will push it off of this step three inches, but the post is one inch, which means the back side of the post from this step will be two inches to the back side. So if it's off the step, I like to have it I like to have it on the back side of the post. If it's onto the step I like to have it on the front side of the post. So just make sure that that is also correct. This is how tall the bottom step is. I usually bring this measuring back. Sometimes the right and left sides are different. I put in the longest measurement here. So whichever one is taller, I put that one in right here. And they're typically six and three quarters, six and five eighths, maybe seven inches. If this post goes on this step right here, this bottom step, there is no need uh, to put this in. It can be left blank. If I bring it back, you can just put it in anyway. And so once we have this, uh, all of this information in, everything in here has to be filled out. We can select Draw. And then it will draw it from the bottom of this uh, bottom step upwards. So if we select it here, it will start to draw it. Now what it's asking us here is it wants to know where we would like to set our intermediate post. But of course this railing does not have one. If you select a step, it will put an intermediate post on that step. If you do not want to have an intermediate post, you can hit enter and it will draw the entire rail out. And then it will also calculate the bill of materials and the next click will put insert the bill of materials from the top right corner. And so uh, if we uh, if we look here, it tells us exactly how many cap rails to cut at a certain length. It has doubled all of the bill of materials because we have two of Project Stair 1. We have two of them, it has doubled the bill of materials, and that way the guys will know to make two of them. Now once we once we insert this uh, our, our railing here and it draws it up, we typically take all of the dimensions and we will transfer them over to a different layer. Uh, we'll transfer them over to a different layer uh, called annotations, which we typically create uh, from the beginning. And so we'll open up our layer, our layer manager, and go to create one called annotations. We're going to make it this is our red color, and then we can put all of our annotations onto uh, all of our all of our dimensions onto this property, this annotations uh, layer. So that they're all red and they'll be they'll all be red on the drawing. I usually put the angle measurement on the draw on the annotation layer as well. So any words, any uh, dimensions, anything, it goes on that annotation layer. And then we can add a late, uh, leaders, which we learned a little while ago, and we can make uh, notes like right here that maybe this pin will get a uh, lamb's tongue, and that way the guys in the back don't have any questions about uh, about exactly what the end gets. Uh, we can also build those parts out in our table by adding uh, new rows and things like that. Um, 
these dimensions typically come back in uh, a different format than what we would like to give the guys. So I moved them, um, go to the properties, I changed them from architectural right here to the fractional measurements, and and that is how to generate an entire railing from the measurements.